Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting the subscribe and the notification bell before you get in too deep and realize how fucking garbage this content is. If, on the other hand, you're one of those weirdos who's come back for more, I certainly think you may want to give your head a wobble. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. For today's video, we are taking a look at one of my all-time favourite decks, Burning Abyss. Today we're looking at the Danger variant, something that was being used before. We've gone for a bit more of a focus on a pure aspect rather than using a ton of different extenders, and we're just relying on those BA names to get us through the game. Now this certainly isn't the most optimised, most perfect, most competitive version of the deck, but it is super budget friendly and it is an absolute ton of fucking fun to play with. And you know what, to some of us, that matters. That matters. Now if you're watching today's video and you're feeling inspired and you would like to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh singles or even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description to their eBay store and by using my link there you'll get yourself a nice cheeky discount on their eBay store. But anyway that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so before we get stuck in, let me first apologise if you hear any weird noises in the background, particularly if it sounds like a fan is taking off like it's in a jet engine. That'll probably be my laptop making the crazy noise. Hopefully, though, we can edit all of that out with the post-video audio editing. And once again, just to preface this, the intention here isn't to do anything super competitive. We just wanted something explosive, something fun, and something not too serious. Now, I have built this with a little bit of budget in mind, so I've tried to keep this as cheap as possible for those of you who want to pick up this kind of deck for a bit of fun. Now, there are better alternatives that you can splash into here. Of course, you can swap out Borrel Sword for Access Code Talker and that kind of good stuff. But honestly, for a budget variant, this is something that is an absolute ton of fun. The most expensive card in here likely is going to be Hulk of Fibrax, but honestly, they're not even that crazy now anyway. But anyway, I digress. Let's get stuck into the actual deck profile for you. So we've got just one copy of Nessie. Of course, this can search any of your dangers and is absolutely great for that sort of thing. Of course, being level 7, it doesn't do a whole lot for you in anything else. But being able to either draw cards or search a danger which will get you somewhere is always a good start. Now we've got triple copies of Mothman in here. This is actually searchable, not just by Nessie, but you'll see later on in the deck what we can do to get into this. Uh, it's definitely one of the better ones being able to draw and discard. Certainly doesn't hurt you in this deck. Of course, the downside is you can help reload your opponent's hand a little bit, so you do need to be very careful of that. But honestly, playing it at three feels really nice. We've got a single copy of Chupacabra. This is, of course, so you've got more names that you can try and resolve here. And ultimately, that's what some of these choices come down to, just having variation in the names. You could cut this, as well as Thunderbird, Bigfoot, Ogopogo, and the Spell Card, if you wanted to add some other extenders. Uh, and honestly, there's so many cheap extenders that can go into this deck that work really well that that wouldn't be an issue. But honestly, I quite like playing this package the way it is. But in any case, Chupacabra is just another really good extender. And of course, if nothing else, it's like all the other dangers. It's a free body on board. A way to link climb and a way to draw deeper into your deck. We've got the two level threes here, Suchinoko and Jackalope. I really probably don't need to explain these any further. There's a reason they're at one each. And of course, they are level threes, so they are perfect for this deck. We then have a single copy of Ogopogo because you can actually use this to send the spell card. Now, we'll get onto what the spell card does in a minute, but primarily that's what we're going to use this for. Now, if you wanted to, with the fact that we've got so many 8s in here, you could run some rank 8s as well. That's entirely up to you. Uh, I know some people like to do this kind of thing. They like to run stuff like Dingus or Sanifond, so it can lock your opponent out. I didn't want to use the spaces for that. I wanted to use some slightly more utility-based cards, but certainly there are options that you can go with and make Ogopogo less of a dead card. But again, if nothing else, it's an extra name. You're going to be able to send that spell card if you want to, and of course, you can dig a little bit deeper. And that's much the same for Bigfoot and Thunderbird. And of course, if you do happen to go second these give you another option but if nothing else they're just beat sticks which is never a bad thing in this game and that concludes our actual danger package you know in terms of the monsters at least uh, and honestly i think this is perfectly fine as it is again you could shuffle some of these down if you wanted to and make space for other extenders to make this a bit more competitive if that's something you wanted to do but i really like this package as it is 
Now moving on to the Burning Abyss monsters, just two copies of Seer. I honestly don't think the third is really needed. Uh, if one gets taken out, there's not much you can do, but honestly your opponent's never going to hit both of them, and if they do you're just in a kind of a bit of bad luck but honestly, the issue with BAs of course is that if you have too many of the same name they're pretty much useless. So I've kept most of them to two, there's only one that's at three in here and that is Graf but we'll get to that in a moment. The rest are all two or below. So again, two copies of Seer, that's enough to just keep your loop going, which is honestly perfectly fine. A single copy of Calcab back row is a little bit more heavy, so normally I wouldn't play this. But the fact that we want more names is one thing. And then, of course, the fact that back row is a bit more heavy in the current format, this can actually come up a little bit more, forcing the activation or, of course, bouncing stuff back to the hand that otherwise may be problematic. We've got two copies of Libic in here. You could possibly up this to three, but again, I just didn't want multiples of the same name clogging up their hands. So, two copies of Libic works absolutely fine for me, of course. An integral part to unclogging your hand, getting names on board, and going off from there. Two copies of Alec and two copies of Farfer. I'll discuss these in the same category. I know traditionally Farfer has been a bit of a staple as a three of, but honestly the fact that these both have targeting effects can be a bit of a downshot in the current game. They are good utility cards to have and when they come up they are very powerful. Unfortunately they are, they are far more found in the situation where they don't actually do enough for you and you're just using them as additional names. So for that reason we've gone for two of each. Again if you wanted to you could up these to more but I think that that gets a little bit cloggy. Now onto the one BA that we actually have three copies of, that's Graf. It summons from the deck and that really is the main reason that we're running it at three. I think you absolutely need to play this. You need to see it. Of course, it's better to be able to send it from the deck. But if you see it in your hand, it's really not a big deal. Uh, but honestly, I think you just want to make sure that you've got a way of seeing this card. And if you open it, you open it. There's not a whole lot you can do. Of course, sending it from the deck is the more desirable option. We have two copies of Skarm. Honestly, the third one doesn't really come up. The games don't tend to go long enough for that to come up anyway. Uh, and to be honest with you, two just seems absolutely fine. The third always gets a little bit cloggy. It doesn't do enough in your hand, in my opinion. So honestly, just two works absolutely fine. We have a single copy of Barbar Bar in here. Again, this is mostly just to be another name, but of course the burn damage can occasionally come up, especially if you're going into time and you get into a grindy situation. This can certainly help you out. And very similarly, just a single copy of Rubik in here. Again, largely, it doesn't come up that often. It is just an extra name for you to get onto the board. But of course, the fact that you can summon it off Halka Fibrax is beneficial. Not that you're really going to use it to go into the Synchro from there, but that is an option that you can go down the route of. We have triple copies of Tour Guide, the Honorary Burning Abyss Monster Tour Guide from the Underworld. You absolutely need to play three of it. The best normal summon in the deck, hands down. Unfortunately, we've managed to keep that number low of those normal summons that we want to use. Speaking of which, we have triple copies of Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Although you can use this as a normal summon, it's a little bit less desirable, although it can come up. Of course, the best option is to be able to summon this off Tour Guide and go from there. But again, it gives you the option if you don't see any other normal summons in your opening hand. Running a single copy of Goki Pole. This is to search your Mothman. Nice and simple. It's a level 3, so of course it can easily be sent from the deck. It can be made into rank 3s if you need to. And it searches Mothman, which is pretty cool. And we have a single copy of Edgem Sabres. Honestly, just way too powerful not to be running this in the deck, in my opinion. You absolutely need to run this. The freest extender in the world. You can rig the top of your deck so you know exactly what you're milling. It's all of the good stuff that you could possibly need. We have a single copy of Danger Response Team. This is the spell card I was telling you about for the dangers. Absolutely awesome. Of course, being able to send it off Ogopogo to be able to ditch and draw. You can stick it back on the bottom of your deck and so on, so forth. Just a really cool card. Honestly, it's worked really nicely whenever I've used this in any builds using dangers. Single copy of Foolish Burial. It's a great starter or an extender depending on what you need. Fantastic card, in my opinion, needs to be in the deck. A single copy of Call by the Grave because you are a bit more susceptible to hand traps. And note, we're not running any in this. The intention is to just combo off and go absolutely crazy. So with that in mind, we're not running any hand traps, but we do need some protection from them for ourselves. And then finally, we round off the main deck with triple copies of Allure of Darkness. This is, of course, pretty much everything in the deck is dark, so it's easy enough to dig deeper and go on with this. If you end up with multiple BAs, ones that you can't really make use of, ones that are useless against your opponent, you can easily get rid of them. It really doesn't matter, and you can go off from there. And then we move on to the extra deck, so I'm going to start off with Cherubini, uh, of course Cherubini being Cherubini, just one copy of it is perfectly fine, you could run a second if you wanted, but honestly I just don't think it comes up enough. Two copies of Dante, you'll never need a third, two is perfectly plenty, and honestly again I think just two works absolutely fine. A single copy of Beatrice because she's at one, if she was at more we probably would run additional copies. 
A single copy of Virgil in here. Honestly, I just wanted to play it because I could. Um, again, there's probably better options that you could play in here than this. There is some fringe benefits of being a Burning Abyss monster in name, but honestly, it's not really that crazy. You could run Brio, which is arguably just way better and does exactly the same thing, but there you go. And we are running a single copy of Purple Dante. Uh, Grape Dante over here, of course, summoned off Beatrice. There are less ways to get rid of Beatrice now in the current game than people actually play main deck, especially at the uh, top end of the meta to get rid of it um, without destroying her. So, of course, this is a good backup. Your opponent will usually bank on the fact that you don't have this in the extra deck. Uh, so by having it there, it's a really good option to go into. It's kind of a one-trick pony because normally once they've done it once, they know it's there and they won't do it again. But it is a good option. We're running a single copy of Long Shlong in here. Easy enough to make, of course, with the way the deck is geared, but it's a good option to have a negate in the deck. It doesn't come up all that much, but it is a good card to end on in your first turn board if you can. And of course, the fact that you don't just have to use 2 for it, you can use 2 plus comes up as well. A single copy of Breaksword, it's Breaksword, you already know what it does. A single copy of Grand Pulse, this is just for back row removal. We've got the option in here. It's kind of pseudo Tornado Dragon for this deck. We've got a single copy of IP Mascarena for interrupting our opponent. A single copy of Halka Fibrax for just free things. We've got the nice utility package here, which you're usually going to go into off your IP Mascarena. We've got Phoenix and Unicorn. There are some other options you can run in here, but honestly, I think these two are the best of the bunch. A single copy of Appaloosa. You're going to want to try and make this as quickly as possible so you don't just lose to Nibiru, because this deck does lose hard to Nibiru. And then finally, we round off with a single copy of Borosaur Dragon. Again, if you've got it, you can use Access Code Talker, which would be the better option. But Borosaur is very budget-friendly, and that is something that I wanted to try and stick to with this profile. And that, my amigos, is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough that you have hit subscribe, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. But in either case, thank you very much for making it this far into the video. Most people don't. You're one of the few who has, which probably says more about you than anyone else. In all seriousness though, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. Now it is worth noting that we are going through a slew of deck profiles at the moment, mostly because it's the easiest content to put out and the easiest to do without physical access to cards. However, the thing that's going on in the world that I can't say without getting demonetized seems to be slowly moving away and hopefully we'll have a return to live events in the next few months next two or three maybe uh, a push so hopefully we can get back to doing what we love doing now it is worth noting that when the usual schedule resumes we'll have locals profiles which is always better going face to face than it is otherwise we do live duels which you'll be able to see plenty of matches and you can tell players how bad they are and trust me i quite enjoy reading those comments it's even better when i get to go back to locals and tell someone how fucking bad they are on top of that of course we'll have all of our locals vlogs all of our standard event vlogs for when we go to bigger events like regionals ycs's nationals all of that good stuff and a bit more of everything that you could possibly want from your favourite content creators. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me, enough time of yours that has been taken up. Hopefully you have hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.